In this video, we will see how to apply dependency injection principles to our code examples using Spring Framework with XML configuration. In the previous video, we saw how to perform manual dependency injection by manually creating the objects we want and passing them into the email client class. Now we will see how to use Spring Framework to pass dependency into our classes. So Spring Framework provides us a way to automatically create objects and inject them into our application at runtime. This functionality is provided by something called as a Spring IOC container. The Spring IOC container is responsible to create our objects and maintain its entire life cycle. So instead of manually creating the objects in our code using the new keyword, we can ask Spring for objects we want and it injects them at runtime. One of the ways to do this is by specifying all the objects we need inside an XML file. Then the Spring IOC container reads this XML file and will create the required objects and inject them into our class at runtime. We can also do this, of course, by using the Java annotations, but in this video, we will mainly focus on using the XML configurations. So to use the Spring IOC container in our code, Spring provides us with two interfaces called as Bean Factory and an application context. The application context interface actually extends the Bean Factory interface and provides us much more features uh, on top of it. And it is also officially recommended by Spring to use application context interface over the Bean Factory interface. If you need more details about this, I will add a link in the description section. As this application context is an interface, we cannot directly use this in our code. We need an implementation of this interface. So there is actually a class which implements this interface and the class name is this class path XML application context class. So if you want to access the Spring container in our code, you can just use the class path XML application context. So let's go back to our code and uh, let's rewrite it uh, so that we use the Spring container to inject our dependencies instead of us manually doing it. Back inside the email client class, I will delete the old code and let's rewrite this using Spring. As I mentioned, first we will use application context interface here and then we use the class path XML context class. You can read the source code of this class by holding the control and clicking on the class name. And uh, here you can see that this class accepts a string as the constructor parameter. And if you read the documentation of this constructor, it accepts the string as a parameter and this string is actually the location of the XML file which contains the information about our objects. So our next step is to create this XML file. We can do that by right clicking on the resources folder, new, file, Let's call this file as beans.xml. And now what I will do is go to the Spring documentation website. And from there, I will quickly copy the contents of the XML file and paste it into our beans.xml. Because typing out the contents of this XML is actually pretty boring. I don't want you to watch me type all the XML namespaces and XST information. So let's go through the contents of this XML file. You can see that after the initial XML declaration tag, we have a tag called as beans. So here we have a terminology, not necessarily a new one, which is frequently used in Spring world. Uh, Spring bean is nothing but a Java object, also called as a pojo or plain old Java object, which is managed by Spring. So our XML configuration file is made up of a bunch of Spring beans. Each bean entry in this file will replace the new keyword when we create the object. So in our example, we want to inject the dependencies into the email client class. So the first thing would be to add a bean with ID as email client and the value of our class would be the class name of the email client. Here we should provide the fully qualified class name of the email client class. We can easily get this information by right clicking on the email client class and click on copy reference. And now let's paste this value. So as you can see, it's nothing but the name of the class, including the package structure, which is it in. So it's like providing the name and address of this class. Now we have declared how to create the bean for email client class. Let's also provide the spell checker to the email client class. As we are passing the spell checker object as a constructor argument, we can declare that in the XML file using the constructor arg tag. And inside the tag, we have to pass a reference of the spell checker bean. For that, we have to first create a bean for spell checker. Let's do that in the second bean tag. 
I will provide the ID as basic spell checker. And for the class, I will again copy the fully qualified name and paste it here. Now we have a bean also for basic spell checker. Let's pass the ID of the basic spell checker bean as a constructor reference to the email client bean. We can also create a bean for advanced spell checker by just copying pasting the bean tag of the basic spell checker and replacing the ID and class values of the tag. Now we have created beans for both of our spell checker implementations. Now we can decide which spell checker to pass to our email client class without changing anything inside the class. If you want to use a basic spell checker, we pass the reference of the basic spell checker bean. If you want to use an advanced spell checker, we pass the reference of the, of the advanced spell checker bean. This is how Spring makes us to write better Java code. Now our code is much more configurable than before. But we are not yet done here. We have just configured the beans inside the XML file. We have to still read this XML file and access the beans. Let's see how to do that. Inside the email application class, let's pass the XML name as the constructor argument to the class path XML application context class. You have to get used to the long class names in Spring World. This is one of the many classes with the long names you will come across in your journey to learn Spring Framework. Right, now we have our application context. And if you see the old source code, we were first creating an object for email client class. So now we can ask the Spring container to give us the email client bean by typing application context dot get bean. And here I will pass the ID of the bean which is email client. And I will also tell to spring container what is the class type of this bean, which would be email client dot class. So instead of writing a new email client of new basic spell checker, we just say application context dot get bean and we have our email client class with the basic spell checker. I will uncomment the calls to the send email method. And now it's time to run this and see if everything is working as expected. Let's do that by clicking on the green arrow and run application. And voila, you can see that we have the log message, check spelling using the basic spell checker method. Let's try it again with advanced spell checker and rerun the application. So you can see that the log messages are coming from the advanced spell checker class here. With that, we will end this video. We have successfully added the Spring XML configuration to our application. If you like this video, do subscribe to my channel for more interesting tutorials like this. I will see you in the next video.